um, in a working paper published by the National Bureau of Economic Research in December 2018, researchers discussed the impact of the Hale Scholarship on the applications and attendance of students from low socioeconomic status backgrounds. The study indicated personalized intervention, especially through attractive letter packaging and contact through Hale, positively impacted students' choice of more selective elite schools. Given the study has only drawn conclusions from the first two years of the program, is it too soon to deem the scholarship a success in regards to substan substantially decreasing the income gap? The income gap. Why? Are there any plans to implement the paper's findings about increased personalized early intervention for all types of scholarships the university offers? Or for all types of scholarships the university offers? Yeah. So um, let me make an analogy. Uh, I'm a medical doctor. When you do a clinical trial, you do a double-blind clinical trial trying to make sure that the new treatment's better than the old treatment and that you're not introducing a bias into the experiment. But all along the way of doing a trial, you're always uh, having a panel check the results because it turns out if the results are so compelling that one treatment is better than another, it's actually unethical to continue the study because the people that are in the control group are not getting the full advantage of what you've learned. So in the case of this Hale Scholarship, which is a study led by Professor Donarski from Public Policy and Education and Economics, uh, the results were so incredibly striking that although the professor continues her study and this uh, NBER publication is the first uh, public report of the data, uh, we've begun implementing it already because it was so striking, her results. And it's such a major goal of our university is to make sure that a Michigan education remains uh, accessible and affordable. And we attract talented people from all different parts of the economy. Now, we've already implemented it, uh, and it's already showing success. So uh, we call it something different at the campus level. We call it the Go Blue Guarantee. And one of the main take-homes from the Health Scholars Program is in the setting of this high touch interaction with potential students, instead of saying to them, if you say we give generous need-based financial aid and we'll meet your full calculated need, if you say to them, if you come from a family at or below a family income of $65,000, you don't pay any tuition, it's free. It turns out that's really powerful. And in the Hale study, it increased the frequency of applicants two and a half fold by a, compared to a control group. And that's why we've implemented it in effect for the entire in-state admissions process. So we've told existing students and then all of our applicants that if you get accepted to the university and if you come from most families with incomes below 65,000, that uh, you won't pay tuition and we'll, we'll calculate if you need even more need than that. And it was important to tell people that come from families who make more than that, that we do give generous financial aid based on your family circumstances. And in many instances, we give at least the equivalent of a full tuition scholarship to folks from families that make even more money than that. So the Hale Scholarship Program um, really completely revolutionized the way we reach out to people in different parts of the Michigan economy. The early data, it's only been one admission cycle, but this year's freshman class uh, has increased its fraction of first-generation students, has increased its representation of students from the lower socioeconomic quadrants of the uh, or quintiles of the economy, uh, and it's exceeded our expectations, and we're going to stick with it. And not only that, the study got national attention. So it's the buzz of the community of people around the country that are struggling with the problem of enticing talented kids from lower socioeconomic backgrounds to be brave enough to apply to great universities. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, uh, I'm as proud of this as anything we've done. Thank you. Yeah. And if I can ask a quick follow-up yeah. to that, I think the aspect of the kind of like increased personalized intervention is something that we found very interesting. Um, do you plan on extending that to other types of scholarships you have offers as well? Uh, well, we continuously learn what resonates as we do outreach around the state. So mm -hmm. the goal, is to have people from all around the state and all around the country think of us as an outstanding opportunity for their college education. And financial aid is part of it. We've tended to focus a lot of our resources on need-based aid. So most of the 
all the students that come here are really smart, and it's very difficult to distinguish between you and you, and you're a little bit smarter, but you're, you know, an English major, and you're a, a, a neuroscientist, maybe you should, you know, we, we tend to rely largely on financial need, and then academic excellence. There are scholarships targeted to specific subpopulations of people. Uh, some are uh, targeted on academics, others are targeted on where you come from. So we have a scholarship program that uh, uh, for people that come from one of the counties up north because we have a donor that wants to support people from their county. So we do things like that and we try to use the lessons we learn from something like Hale to improve the effectiveness of our outreach to students. And, you know, it must be working. The number of applications we get uh, is going up by leaps and bounds every year. This last year, we got over 65,000 applications. The year before, we were in the high 50s. Two years earlier, we were in the 40s. It's just uh, thousands. It's just um, so we're quite good at attracting the attention of talented people to apply here.